The start of a new school year can be difficult for many children. New environments and new situations can lead to potential instances of bullying. Joining me now in Studio A is child psychologist Dr. Amy Getz with what parents should do if they see their child is the one displaying bullying behavior. Good morning. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I know we're a few weeks into this new routine uh, and, and so we might be settling in, noticing a few things. Mm -hmm. If parents are noticing, hey, it's my child that's the problem, what can they do? Yeah, it's a great question and one that we don't focus on as much mm -hmm. is what do we do if our child is the bully? And so for parents, it's really important to listen, stay calm and ask questions. Say, I take this really seriously and what what's going on? I want to figure out how I can best help you and uncover the reasons mm -hmm. for why this happened. Yeah, and I just want to say too, if it's your child being the bully, you as their parent, you might have to dig a little bit, right? They're probably not gonna be like, yeah, mom, yeah, dad, it's me. I'm the one that's hurting Susie Q's feelings. Yeah, yeah, it, so it really is important to have that relationship and to be able to ask questions. Yeah. Is this the first time this has happened? Um, is this something that is happening often? Um, and, and helping them see, we take this really seriously yeah. and I wanna get you help. Having that open conversation and really digging for the why mm -hmm. you're feeling this way, which is prompting you to act a certain way. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about uh, parents who are worried about helping if their child is being bullied, but what should they do if they find out if, if it's not their child and it's somebody else's child? Yeah, that's a good question too. And we know that these interactions with bully and who's being mm -hmm, bullied mm -hmm. are really complex and dynamic and changing. So you can have someone who's bullied, who has uh, been the bully before. Yeah. You have someone who is the bully, who's been bullied themselves. So it can be vice versa. And we also know that within these interactions, again, it's not as mm -hmm. simple as victim, perpetrator, yeah. but that you have witnesses to the bullying who might kind of reinforce or encourage, laugh, and keep yeah. the bullying going. And so it's really important for families to check in with their kids, yeah. show genuine interest in what's going on with their lives, how are things going, how's school, not accepting just like, um, you know, how was your day, yeah. good, but really digging deeper into, you know, just how, how are things going? Who are their friends? Um, I think that often with bullying, we don't wanna wait for bullying to happen, but is there a way that we can introduce the topic mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. and just say, hey, I was listening to a news show this morning mm -hmm. where the topic of bullying yeah. came up. Have you seen that before? What did you think? Yeah, that's a really great uh, peg, right, to use to, to be able to host this conversation. What if you as a parent notice uh, a child being bullied that doesn't involve you or your child? Yeah, yeah. It's really important to speak up and to help urge your child to be that voice. It, it takes all of us. It's really a community response. Yeah. This is a public health issue and the responsibility is on all of us to kind of um, look, look out and um, say when they see something. Yeah. With that said, it being it taking a community, uh, what role do educators and coaches play in this? Yeah, they absolutely do. Um, they see bullying happening. It's not an uncommon experience mm. in schools. And so helping to mediate the problem, come up with solutions to the problem. Yeah. We know this happens in school. It also happens outside of school. Um, and so they do play a role in really helping to identify those incidents and help kind of resolve them. When you and I were in school, the bullying was taking place in school, in the cafeteria, in the hallways during recess. Mm -hmm. Today, as you mentioned, it's spilling beyond the four walls of that of that campus. It's going into uh, homes through social media. Yeah. Yeah, the types of bullying have really changed over time. It's not pushing a child into the locker, um, putting their head in the toilet. Um, it really has changed. There's lots of um, relational types of bullying, kind of excluding someone intentionally or online bullying. Um, kids have their phones on them and are often kind of capturing things that might be um, perceived as embarrassing or private, and it can really kind of 
make it out there into the world. And so, yes, uh, this is this is happening. I would encourage families to really kind of again, establish those relationships with their child, talk with them, um, be engaged in what is going on on their phone, who are they talking to, what kinds of things are they doing. Um, and then if you see something that is concerning, um, really taking action. Yeah, taking action. And that can look differently depending on if you're the child or, the, mm -hmm. or an adult, but mm -hmm. doing something about it is certainly necessary. Yes, and so for most school districts, they do have um, policies around anti-bullying mm -hmm. and um, uh, the social media platforms too also have terms of service are related incorporated to in bullying. those yeah those mm -hmm. policies okay well dr getz thank you so much for joining us this morning thank you really for important me. conversation to be having we appreciate it